Today's video will be about the opportunity categories. And yes, you've heard it before. There's also categories. We did them already in previous videos for the tickets and for the projects, the tasks, but now they're also going to be applied to the opportunities. So if you watch those videos, you have already some knowledge on what you can uh, accomplish with those categories. In this case, we go to the admin section and this is under sales and opportunities. The first option here is where you can find the opportunity categories. We click on it and then you'll see there's already two in the system. There's the standard one, non-editable. Uh, that's your system. That's always the one that you can always fail back to. It's not active. It's not default. So that's good. That's your kind of your, your, your like I said, fillback solution. And there's a copy of it. Ex exactly the same. It's a default one and that's active. Good way to, uh, to uh, expand on this is just you leave that one still in place. And when you want to create a new one, you just say you're going to do a copy. That will bring us a new screen in which we can change this whole category. And as you can see, again, from the other videos, uh, the layout is pretty similar. And we're going to make it a uh, new title. We'll call it that one. Make it active. We can even do a little color by clicking on it. And then we can say, okay, what do we want to have in there? On the header, opportunity category and the name, that's something that you always want to have in there. On the main body, there's a description. Uh, you can edit that one, it's, but it's, uh, for sure it's, it's visible. Timeline would be something that I would say, okay, maybe not. Checklist, it's not something I can edit or uh, uncheck here. So there's not, uh, not any option. Checklist, again, you can have all the checklists available. As you can see in this particular system, there are no checklists that we made for the, for the sales side, so there's nothing there. If you would have some checklists created, they would be popping up, but right now, whenever you create them, they would become available because the button all is checked. We have some form templates as well. Again, same as with the checklist, we don't have form templates in the system, but if you would have some form templates, maybe a, a form template of an easy email crafting to the, to the client, giving them a, uh, an update on the status of that particular opportunity, it would pop up here. I'm going to leave it also again to all. So once we create any form templates, they will automatically be available in our, in our opportunity. And the same applies also for the notification. As you can see, there are some uh, available notification templates that are default from the system. Also, we leave it at all, so we have everything available. Later on, when you go further into the process, you might be able to modify it here and say, you know, I don't want to have all my checklist or all my uh, forms available uh, per category. I'm making specific categories where only a couple of forms or checklists are available. And that's the whole reason of these categories, to limit the amount of information. Like me going here to the second tab, the details tab, as you can see, there's lots and lots of information that you can present. And by presenting maybe too much information, it becomes overwhelming. First thing again, what do we have in the header right now? These are all the, all the items that are Basically visible um, company name, I would say uh, yes, although it's already in the other one uh, visible. The contact visible, yeah. Status, you want to have it visible too. And the, and, the, and the states, well, in this case, I would say the states, yes, but maybe the, the status not. Let's see what we can do. Still a required field. Default status is, is active, but we, we can make it just not visible. That's at least a little bit less information. Projected close, yes, you want to have it on there, the close date, and either way, the last date too. Then on the section in the fields, there's a whole bunch of information available too. You have your primary quote, you have additional quotes, proposal project, and a sales order. And if sales order is not being used too much, then you can again yeah, drag this one down like this. You go to the hidden fields all the way at the bottom. See, there's a lot and in this one everything is almost open that's why there's a lot of information um, you can also write uh, click on the hamburger menu and say hide field in this case that's easier if you are all the way in the top you have your your opportunity on information and it's again if you owner and your start date as you can see some of them are required uh, if you know there's no uh, requirement on the start date you would try to check it out but some of the boxes, as you can see, although it looks like you can uh, uncheck them, 
This one is still a mandatory field. And like this, there's a lot of information in there. Now, let's say your promotion name is something additional. You say, you know, we don't need to work with that. You say hide field. And that one is gone. Line of business, you might not even be using it too. There's a lot of extra information. Rating, you could work with it. Uh, it's a little bit the, the same with the probability. It well, should be another video where it's a little bit more explained on, on those kind of items. Um, also, when creating an opportunity, uh, there's some, some handy information there, what you can do there too. But now, I'm just going to leave them in there, so they're going to be visible. Then all the values are available. And this is a whole stuff here. Now, which, for example, what I know is uh, common, of course, is that you want to see your revenue. So, yeah, you want to see maybe your revenue of your cost, your one-time revenue, and your monthly revenue. But probably quarterly revenue is something that you don't use. We're going to put it to hide. Semi-annual, probably no too. Yearly revenue, I would say, leave the one in there, uh, because that's usually the, the ones that we have in there. And then we go to the cost, one-time cost, monthly cost. Again, I'm going to take off the quarterly cost and also the semi-annual cost. Like obviously we have said in several videos before, the less information, the better, the cleaner it gets and the easier it is. There's also one that says calculate the totals for an amount of months. So in this, in this case, if you set up a contract for 36 months, it can calculate those totals and then you have a good value of the entire contract's uh, worth. There's also some advanced fields uh, and you can do the entire section. So these are also uh, other items where you can give kind of estimates in there. Uh, in our case, we usually don't use these ones. We use it straight from the quote where the values come from. So I'll say hide this section and there it's gone. Recognize the revenue. It's all at once or nothing. It's something that, uh, that you can use further down the road when, uh, when you play with this. I'm going to move it to the additional fields. Then you have a whole bunch of additional details too. Uh, it's very good on, on when you process this, uh, this opportunity, but I think in the beginning everybody will just use very uh, simple steps. So the additional details for now, I'm just going to say, okay, I'll hide that section too. It's uh, not being used. Then you have something about the win-loss metrics when you want to run some, uh, some queries and everything. It's good to have it on the opportunity, but in, in the, when you just barely start, I would say turn it off, less information. It's going to be easier to, to create a quote. I'm worried about the hidden fields. Later on, when you want to do deep dive into the hidden and lost fields, there's some reports on the backend that you can pull. Uh, and by that time, when you see, you know, I want to see that, I want to see it per opportunity, you can uh, mark those items again by uh, making them visible. Like here, for example, win reason, if you want to uh, make it visible, you hover over that little hamburger menu and you say make field visible. Then we have the section of the insights. Again, there's a, there's a uh, section about visible insights and hidden insights. There's a forecast is in there. The company contact is in there. Let's see, we can hide that insight because we had already on another place, we had the, 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 the company and the contact already. Activity summary, the proposal project was already also on the other one. And here you can choose where you want to have the information, but definitely not duplicate information. Um, is there an assessment? Again, if you go further, if you go very into actively with the opportunities, maybe have even a sales group of people there with a, with a sales manager, then definitely that would be handy. And then you can really score and track on, on, the, on the assessment of those opportunities. How, yeah, how big is your chance of you calculate that you will win those opportunities? But forecast is a good one. Activity summary is a good one too. And there's a couple of other ones that we uh, left over here. Uh, you can say the, the project, proposal project uh, here, two items. You can do company contact also uh, separately. In this case, I think this is more than value, uh, more than enough information. And we press save and close. Now we created this new one. Uh, it's active, but it's not the default. So right now you can click again over the or uh, hover over the hamburger menu and you set this one as default. And it will pop up with a message that two resources are configured to use the other one by default. If you change, then the resource will start using the new default, and that's indeed what we want to do because that's the more cleaner default with limited information. Now, a good way to, for example, to do it is that these, this default uh, category, we made it very limited, uh, so less information. So this would be a good one for your regular salespeople to enter an opportunity. You want them to uh, register every opportunity, and they shouldn't be bogged down by entering a lot of information. So that's why this one is very good. 
But if you have a sales manager in your team, that person might uh, want to see a couple of more information and especially after the, the, the fact, or he might need to edit a couple of things, but with the win, uh, win and loss reason, those kind of things. So we can probably create another copy of this one and then you enable those fields for the win and loss reason and the, and the assessment. So your sales manager will get only the templates that's specifically for him. You will not make that one default. You will just assign that category to, uh, to him as a resource. And then he has access to that and he can see more information on his opportunities. I think that uh, this is a good overview of what you can do with the opportunity categories. Again, uh, also watch the videos for the ticket categories and the, and the task categories. There's some more handy information in there as well. And then you can apply it all to this one. If there's any questions or uh, concerns, uh, join us on our Facebook group and you can post a comment there. Thank you.